Here we go. Here we go. It is Thursday, October 24th, 2013. Welcome to another Galactic Netcast. This is the Time Traveling Robots in Space, number 68. You know, I should do a whole Time Traveling Robots in Space. Space. Only if you do it every time. Okay. Remind <laughs> me next time. I'm supposed I to will. do it. Uh, that is the voice of Mr. Paul Swickard from Glendale, California. Glad to have you back, Paul. Thank you, sir. It's good to be back. You know, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, but I'm here. I'm playing, okay. you know, uh, Mr. Dad. Wait, no, Mr. Mom. Yeah, Mr. Mom. You're, you're Mr. Mom. You're always right. Mr. Dad, and you've got the kid by yourself tonight. So in case yeah. he awakens, you'll just have to get up and, and take care of things. Indeed. And he's usually pretty good, and he understands. I'm doing a show. He gets it. He's, he's seven gonna, months old. He gets it. He's See, gonna be a professional. Up? He's gonna be a professional. Uh, uh, he's gonna be so used to people doing podcasts by the time he's of age. Oh, it's gonna be oh. second nature to him. It's gonna be. It's going to be. There's no. There's not going to be a thing odd about podcasting no. in his mind. Yeah, no, not at all. All right, it seems that we have lost Anessa. <laughs> I'm still here. I was just trying to find the product I was going to ramble about, and I don't know what I did with it. Okay, well, that voice is uh, the other host of this show, Anessa Moines from Denton, Texas. Uh, on the video, we can't see you. It looks like your chair is talking. <laughs> see, this is where Dave's radio you know, personality comes into play, because now he has to realize... Like, how am I going to compensate for the random crap that is going on right now? <laughs> it's chaos! It's chaos! Anessa what can't stay in her seat. Okay, how about we do this? While you look for that product, I will describe the show, and then we'll come back around. We'll, we'll circle back around Anessa to Anessa. Circle, circle back. back. Now, that's a corporate term. We're yes. circle back. Yeah. All right, this is the show where we discuss all things related to time travel, robots, and space in both the science fiction and science fact genres. Not really genres, areas of life, I guess you could say. Uh, we do it by running down news stories from each of those separate topics. We discuss our entertainment picks for the week and then ask and answer the question of the week. If you want to watch us uh, do the show live, you can go to galacticnetcasts.com slash live. I need to set up some deal where it will send out a text message or, or alert you that we're going to go live. That would be a cool feature. I think well beyond my actual knowledge of making things work. Yes, but yes. It would <laughs> be cool to have. It would. Uh, our, See, our, you're, you're like a product manager. You're like, you're an idea guy. You're like, I have no idea how to do it. I just know it'll be awesome, so do it. I, I need some developers. Like, uh, d developers, 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 make it work. Make this thing you, that I want. You, programmers, coding monkeys, go, <laughs> do. Dance, little monkeys, dance. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you know, our our our, um, our viewer, one of our viewers, Chris Perillo, mm -hmm. Chris, you weren't on that show, were you? you? That was the week that you were away. Chris Perillo was, uh, wa Chris Perillo was watching us. Okay. And he commented during the show. Well, good for Chris Perillo. Yeah, do you know who Chris Perillo is? No. Okay. Uh, he's kind of a web celebrity. He used to be on Tech TV way back in the day. Um, he's got a big... sound, his name does sound familiar. Yeah, he's got is a huge... Mr. Chris, is Mr. Chris returned? Uh, that is no. Exactly, that is the question. Oh, say you, no, you no. blew it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, we, <laughs> I think we, we made him mad or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is the show where we talk about uh, time traveling robots in space, like I just said a few minutes ago. Um, let's get it started, and hopefully, oh, the first story is Paul, so we don't need a Nessa. Nessa, you can keep looking. We I don't know where it's at. Okay. <laughs> that's poor, that's, you'd think I'll you'd keep remember. Looking, though. Well, I took it to really work because one of my coworkers like wanted to see it. Uh huh. And so I'm I would... wondering if maybe I just stuck it in my desk and left it there. That's possible. Do you want to describe what you were looking for? Sure. <laughs> so I was watching some video the other day, and you know the adverts that come before your YouTube video now, where you have to sit through and like after five I seconds do. skip ahead. Well, this one actually caught my attention, and I sat through all two minutes of this video, <laughs> and it's for a product that's called Poopery. 
poopery. Poopery. Is it, is it what it sounds like? Yes. If it sounds like something that will make your number two sound smell pretty, then yes. yes. It sounds is pretty. what it sounds like. That's or a smells different product. pretty. I know. <laughs> no, it smells pretty. Um so yeah, it's this spray that you get and you spray the toilet like two or three times or however many times it says on the directions and it sprays a layer of film which I'm going to guess is probably oil because it stays on top of the water and so you do this before you go. You sit down, you drop the kids off at the pool <laughs> and um, then things smell pretty and you don't really have to smell your crap. So literally smell your literally. crap. Literally. Yes. And it's wonderful though because if you go to the website, I think it's like poopery.com, um the names for their different scents are hilarious. And my coworker was sitting there and he reached um or he saw one that says shit and pretty and he just like busted out laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You would be dead inside if you didn't laugh out loud on that. I know. So, um, yeah, they had this opportunity for, like, a free sample, but you pay for shipping, so it's, like, 2 or $3 for shipping. And so they send, like, a little tube, and it has, like, this pretty floral enclosure. If you think of uh, perfume uh, samples, when they have that little booklet that you open, and it's like, oh, smell the roses of whatever. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's kind of the same thing, and it talks a little bit about the product and whatnot. And apparently, they're a Texas-based company, so they're based oh. here in the North Texas area. So Power to I'm Texas. buying local. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so buy local. Yes. Um, I. Not that you guys need to know. I did give it a shot, and it it works. Apparently, we do need to know. Yeah, that's 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 all the details that we need. We don't need to know anything so, more. Dave, do you? You didn't need to know what I body. had for lunch, but yeah, um, no, it it works. So I was actually kind of surprised, and no, my coworker was like, "I want to say... report on this," and I was like, "I don't know how else to tell you this, but I tried poopery and it works." <laughs> okay, 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 and I don't mean this to sound crass, but we need to go here because this has been brought up. How bad was it? Or could you tell how no, bad it no, was? Paul, Paul, we I don't couldn't tell how, like, how bad my crap was. Yes. I couldn't tell. It's a fair question. We're talking it, it about poop, It is a poo, fair people. question. It's like, oh, man, I totally had like all this Mexican food. Do and... you all miss me? This is so, the... Yes. Yes. I missed you, Paul. Um, uh, the, I don't really, know how bad it was. The purpose of this is to make Dave because, uncomfortable. Okay, so yeah, yeah all like, right. I don't know how bad it was because... Like, it was, like, in and smelling pretty. <laughs> okay. So what you need to do, Anessa, is you need to um, do kind of a experiment, like a, like a blind sample. Like a, you need to eat something that you know will give, that will give off an odor, okay? <laughs> okay. Anessa, you need to get the stomach flu. And then, <laughs> only then, will we be able to figure this out. Yes. yes. Okay, um, no. is it possible that we can actually talk about the subjects of the podcast? Is that, no, we, is that, maybe. this is an end, and we need to discuss it. <laughs> okay. If Th it comes, this might actually come in handy, though. Like, say you're a scientist, and you're working long hours with people, and you only have the one bathroom. You don't want to leave it smelling crappy for the next person. That's always the awkward moment is when you go and you drop a deuce and then someone walks into the bathroom right after you did and you're like, oh, man. I never thought about that. Now, they, need to, make, they need to make an automatic one where it just, uh, you know. They the, do. Oh, if O'Hara can have these weird automatic changing toilet seat covers, they can totally create sprays to just spray poopery automatically. Yes, yes. It's like... You walk into the stall, it's like, shh, 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 and you're done. <laughs> you just drop right. and go. All right. Okay. All right. Now, I believe it is time <laughs> to talk about time travel robots in space. Oh, hang on. What the hell? It's really soft. Okay. I don't know. Pardon me. Sector one, time travel. All right, Paul, that is your story. What do you got for us, sir? This story is about poo, ladies and gentlemen. No. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what, Dave, Anessa, I have fantastic news. We have the world's longest time traveler on record. 
actual Easy. person traveling through time. That's true. It's absolutely true. Sweet. All right. A Russian cosmonaut, of all people. Well, they, they're always first to things, so that doesn't surprise me. Well, they, you know, they have their attitude about technology is a bit different than ours. They'll build a time machine that, you know, can, like, go into the Earth's core or something. <laughs> like, so something super durable. Like, you know, you can time travel in a hurricane, you'll be fine. And hey, they helped out, uh, what, uh, Bruce Willis? Uh, the Armageddon. They That's they right. stopped by the the Russian space station before they went to the to the asteroid. That's absolutely true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let and I am actually not pulling anybody's leg here, folks. Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kirkolev, I'm gonna say, Kirk okay. Kirkolev, has spent more time in orbit in around the Earth than anybody else, which amounts to 803 days, nine hours, and 39 minutes. 803 days. Wow. That, I, I honest to God, I, I did not think anybody had been in space that long. I thought maybe like a year tops. But that's not straight, is it? That's, he's been up there a few different times. I would hope it's not straight. Oh, I gotta imagine that he's been in like several missions. But no, I don't think it's straight. Because his body would be mush if he was up there for 803 (laughs) days in a row. I'm pretty sure there like doesn't have NASA doesn't NASA have standards about that like you can't spend more time in space than X amount of time. I think it's only otherwise. like four months or something like that. Wow. Yeah, it's like four to six months, I think. Yeah. And then they bring you back down. Uh, according to the Universe Today, I didn't know that was a thing. The retired space adventurer was the world's most prolific time traveler. Due to the effect of time dilation, Kirkolev actually lived. 4.2 seconds less than everybody else on Earth. Wow. <laughs> so effectively, he traveled 0. 0.2 seconds into his own future. Oh, so there. This is a loophole. This is not actual real time. No, it's absolutely true. You just have to do the. It's 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 not flashy because it's math. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. You gotta do the math, Dave. He's traveling faster than everybody else. That's why he's living longer. Okay, he's but traveling he, fat. He is further away from the Earth, and he's going around and at the same rate. So that means he's actually having to travel longer, to in the same amount of time, which means he's okay. going faster than everybody else. Which means okay, makes sense. Yeah, they, yeah, you can do this on the on on Earth too, right? With with if you're traveling around the planet in a jet, sure, you're or it, traveling as well. Sure, or if you're at a certain, like, if you're at a super high elevation, same, de- same deal. You're on the Earth, you're going, well, we're all going at the same speed, relatively. Mm-hmm. And, but the person who is higher is going faster, technically, because they're having to travel more distance than the people who are sm- closer towards the center of the Earth. Time is a tricky thing, you know that? <laughs> it's weird, man. It's, yeah. all, it's all about light, which I'm not sure, I'm like, I, I, I often wonder about that. Like, is light really all there is to it? Like, we're measuring this based on the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Our ability to perceive things, right? So the rays that we get from the sun, I forget how old they are. They're like eight minutes old or something like that? It takes like eight minutes for them to get here. Right. So we measure that in terms of, okay, these particular rays are eight minutes old. And if that's like, so does that mean that when we, the closer, like, I know the whole Einstein thing, like, the closer we get to the speed of light, the more time slows down, but I, I don't know. It just seems weird to me. It just seems weird that the light, it would, like, is time travel all about light speed? That seems to be, like, our measurement of this. Okay, let me ask a question that either of you may or may not have the answer for. When we, a fin- when we finally send people to Mars, will there be a time difference well, will they experience time differently? Will the day is slightly work? different. Okay, right, but it's negligible. It it's like it's like this guy. It would be like you know. I mean, it'd be like a few minutes, but right. The the day is slightly different on Mars. So they'll be going into their future. But their year is gonna be longer because okay. they're farther away from the sun. Okay. The farther you get away from the sun, the longer it takes to orbit the sun. And right. so and while the day is going to be... Does Mars spin at the same rate roughly as Earth? 
Do yeah. Because um, I, I think the... I think it's still like 23 hours. Let's see. How long is a day on Mars? Um, I, I know that they catch up. Oh, to no. Them. It's slightly slower. It, it It's slightly slower than Earth. I thought it was like 23 hours, but it's like 24 hours, 37 minutes, and 22 seconds for one day. One side there. One so there's not that much. So one day on, on Mars. Um, and then the year is a... Here on Mars. But they're, they, <laughs> um, have a they have different time though. Like, like I know that when they put the rovers, uh, when they the the rover missions, whatever rovers they were as a part of at that time, that the people working the shifts at the at the controller place, they they would start their day at like 3 a.m. because that was the Martian day. Mm. Right. And of course, the sun is going to rise at a different time, just because it's further away and the light has a longer distance to travel. Yeah. Um, and the year is 686.98 Earth days, so almost double that of an Earth year. Okay. All right. 1.88 Earth years, I suppose. That's so weird to think about. Yeah, but yeah, the time would be a bit different. I mean, it's similar, but it's still different. You know, on the moon, they're actually central time because uh, they wanted the time to be... I don't know if there's an actual difference in time on the moon, but they wanted the time to be Houston time. For oh, yeah, there. so <laughs> the control center. Yeah, so, so it's central time. Like, it has to be Greenwich Mean time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So interesting, Paul. That's... Um, I know. I mean, you're not like it's not a huge jump in time, but you're you're technically going ahead in time. You're I'm actually, sorry, Dave. I feel as though I've disappointed you. Well, I was hoping for you know, he he he's hoping for like two years or pick. something. This will uh, I think this will be much more Dave's speed. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. You piqued my interest, Paul. All right, all right, good enough. <laughs> Okay, um, so is it a rule that every single astronaut in Russia has to be named Sergei? It seems like that's... I know, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> it's like Sergei... I, or... I imagine the name is similar to that of John. John. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. All right, we would love to get your feedback on the topics that we're discussing, time travel, robots in space, all the stories that will encompass this episode of the show. Uh, leave us feedback, galacticnetcasts at gmail.com, galacticnetcasts at gmail.com. You can also uh, reach out to us on our voicemail number, which doubles as a text number, 805-328-3966, 805-328-3966. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook and circle us on Google+. We're all, all over the place. Leave us, leave us some feedback, positive or negative. We'll take it all, and uh, we'll make it part of the show. All right, moving on with our next topic, which happens to be... Sector 2. Robots. All right, Anessa. Robots are bad. Well, at I least know. the ones that are being programmed to kill humans at their own discretion. What? <laughs> so and and we all agree that programming robots to kill people at their own discretion is a bad idea, right? Yes, I think sure. we can all come to that conclusion. <laughs> but apparently this is reality that's closer to us than we realize. And so a new FAQ from Human Rights Watch summarizes how close we are to autonomous killing machines and how important it is to ban them like now before <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> you have to set a precedent. You, know? you do. Yeah. So um, as the uh, HRW, or the Human Rights Watch document explains, while fully autonomous weapons technology does not exist yet, developments in that direction make it a pressing issue. The 2012 U.S. Defense Department Directive on Autonomy mandates keeping humans in the loop for any decision about the, US, the use of of lethal force for up to 10 years, or other military documents, however, have indicated a long-term interest in full autonomy. Mm. Um, for example, in 2011, U.S. Roadmap specifically for ground systems stated, 
there is an ongoing push to increase UGV, unmanned ground vehicle autonomy, with the current goal of, quote, supervised autonomy, but while an ultimate goal of full autonomy. A U.S. Air Force planning document from 2009 said, advances in AI will enable systems to make combat decisions and act within legal and policy constraints without necessarily requiring human input. Oh, my God. Dude. Yeah, that sounds it's coming. like a bad idea. It's coming, like folks. very bad. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> they're gonna take up arms. They're gonna realize how weak and frail humans are, and they're gonna eradicate us. I don't think that's it. I mean, yes, I think, but I, I'm actually betting that it's gonna screw up before then. Like, I think it's just gonna be a mistake. It's like, oh, this is an enemy combatant, and then we, you know, they, we try to stop it because no, you're wrong. It's not an enemy combatant, and then we become enemy combatants. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're trying to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a mistake. It's See, that, just, yeah. There's a margin a for error that's way too wide in this situation. So, and the HRW document does a great job of breaking down why this would be a problem from a humanitarian standpoint. We want decisions about killing a human being to be made by a human being. And autonomous killing machines might make soldiers safer, but put more civilians at risk. Um, but also from an international law standpoint and a general legal standpoint, um, whom do you hold accountable when a robot kills a human? Yeah, that's another... Plus, the bottom line is once a country has robots that can kill on their own, every other country will feel obligated to follow suit or get left behind. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a, an AI gap. <laughs> like, you, you're like, well, Russia did it, so we have to do it too. It's and new, before you know it, it's like a world filled with killer robots. Yep. But it's going to be easier because then we don't have to send our soldiers... Our, our young men off to war, you know? No, we'll just wait for the robots to come and kill <laughs> us. <laughs> then there will be no humans left to have a war. It's like that short Peace film. on Earth. It's like that short film that I had as my pick a couple weeks ago. It was like, I don't think you were here in NASA. Um, possibly not. No, I think it's when we had the two fill-ins for you guys. Um, but I think it was, it was humans basically fighting robots that got out of control. Uh, which this sounds like this could happen. I. You're so. And how do you like, do? Okay, okay, folks. I'm gonna get on a little bit of a soapbox here. I uh, apologize. Bring, bring it on, Paul. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> I am not. This is by no means a political statement. Okay. Let's look recently. We tried to roll out a website. We these things have been around forever. We tried to roll out a website, and it is. Screwed up. <laughs> Nobody can do anything. I believe the numbers for the first three weeks were one out of ten people could actually do what the website was intended to do. You're talking about the Affordable Care Act, right? I wasn't going to say that, but yes. Okay. <laughs> right. Can you just imagine the kind of issues that we would have with um, a weapon system that's designed to think for itself? I work in software. I test software. That's what I do. There's no such thing as a foolproof system. None. It never is. I play video games. AI, it screws up all the time. It runs around in circles. I've seen, like, its head spin. <laughs> like, just, please, don't do this. Yeah, please. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, if they're going to do this, it's they've got to test it and retest it and... It's got to be foolproof for for them to launch it fully People autonomous. have a problem with the well, drone system as is. Yeah, did you see that story? I think it was the last couple of days about... Uh, it wasn't the U.S. Oh, it was the EU. The EU has problems with um, our drones. They think that our drones are killing more civilians that, that, that then need... I, I hate to say it, but that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, just just, and that's that human human element, man. That's humans controlling it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh, dude, dude, we are going towards this future. This is going to happen in our lifetimes. This needs to sink in. Yeah, 
and I think I think they're on the right track. They need to they need to uh, uh, super uh, not supervise this. They need to um, regulate this before it actually happens. I uh, yes yes I, I mean we need to have rules much like you know we have the nuclear proliferation rules. Mm -hmm. like, and I'm not I'm, I'm but geez oh god there's a scary thought can you imagine like a nuclear deterrent based on a robot? Oh, there, there, so we're in war games. Fantastic. <laughs> Anessa, were you going to say something before and we cut you off? Uh, yeah, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Uh, okay, so, uh, God, I would love some feedback on this story. If, if you're going to give oh, us absolutely. Feedback on anything, please let us know what you think about this. Do you think it's... Um, you think this is a dangerous situation? I think most people would think that as well. I would hope. Mm -hmm. I know, but right? I kind of think it's one of those things that they're not going to do anything until after it's happened, and then it's too late. We are very retroactive people, so yeah, I actually I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> people won't do anything. We will not make it, it. We won't regulate it, especially. We won't like this. Will not become an issue until it becomes a problem. You know what I mean? Like people yep. won't start talking about this until it like like oh my god we accidentally killed la. This needs to be done by Apple, not Google, because you know how Google just huh. rolls up products. Just go here. <laughs> I don't. I'm not particularly comfortable with either, but just saying. So. I'm just say, I'm just comparing. You know, the people that <coughs> are behind this need to be more like an Apple and less like Google, because Google will just put out anything. And go try this. Tell us where it's broken, and we'll fix it. They're not going to accidentally kill somebody or purposefully kill somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's so true. I'm officially scared. You guys ready to move on? Yeah. Are scared, yes. Are you scared enough? It's a good Halloween story. Yeah. It is kind of Killer like robots. It's Halloween. <laughs> Maybe we should change the name of the podcast to "Time Traveling Killer Robots from Outer Space." Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, put a little no egg in it. Okay, so uh, let's change subject real quick and uh, thank our sponsor of the Time Traveling Robots in Space, Audible.com. Yeah. And for you, the Galactic Netcast listeners, Audible is offering a free audio book. Audible is an audio book service, and you just download them to your device and listen at your heart's content. Uh, they're offering you a free download with a free 30-day trial to give you the chance to check out to test run their service and to go along with the theme of this here podcast. May we suggest Dr. Wasserman's Time Chamber, Time Chamber, Preventing Armageddon. That's the name of the book. So here is a brief synopsis. Atlantic City, 1992. Dan Gross Grossman comes across a story that sounds incredible. Did the South really win the Civil War? Did a, lone, did a lone physicist really go back in time to prevent Armageddon? Or is it just the delusional dream of, a, of a, an acknowledged schizophrenic? So uh, the Confederate States of America, 1863, Dr. Carl Miller has only 10 weeks in order to find the only person he believes capable of altering his history, the niece of General Robert E. Lee. He must convince her that the South needs to lose the war and that her uncle is the key to preventing the death of millions. Dr. Miller has accounted for everything in his plan to change the world except falling in love with the woman he must turn traitor. <laughs> so it's a love story, too. Interesting. Right. Okay. Uh, to save the future, he must destroy the past and his only chance at happiness. So uh, try that book out for size if you would like, or... Any other book for free, you get one free download with your 30-day trial of, uh, of Audible.com, and we thank them for their support of the time-traveling robots in space. Oh, I forgot the URL. If you're going to try it out, go to audibletrial.com slash galacticnetcasts. That's audibletrial.com slash galacticnetcasts. All right, let's move on to space, and that is this right here. Sector 3. Space. All right, so Japan has a space cannon. A space okay, cannon? Let me let that sink in for a second. Japan has a space cannon. 
like a cannon that shoots people out into space? I don't think so. Oh. Let's in, let's investigate this a little bit more. <laughs> a unique space cannon developed for Japan's Hayabusa 2 spacecraft has successfully test fired on Earth in preparation for a 2014 mission. During its upcoming journey into space, the cannon will blast an asteroid and mine samples of its soil. So, it's not to launch things into space, it's to be used in space. Ah, although I do like the idea of launching things into space with a cannon. <laughs> That's actually a thing. That is actually a so. thing. I have seen video. That's an idea that somebody had a long time ago to just kind of uh, send small payloads into space using, using a cannon. Right. It would be one long-ass cannon, but it would be a cannon. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the test took place in the Japanese... Prefecture. Prefecture of Gifu, paving the way for the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft to extract soil samples from the asteroid. The Japan Aerospace... <laughs> aerospace... <laughs> <laughs> Exploration I'll, I'll, I'll story closer to home next time. Yeah. Announced on Monday. <laughs> so uh, during the mission of Hayabusa 2, scheduled to begin in December 2014... The space probe will extract soil from inside the asteroid. In order to do this, it will be equipped with a collision device designed to shoot at the surface of the asteroid from a distance of 100 meters with metal shell ammunition moving at a speed of 2 kilometers per second. Is that fast? 2 kilometers yes. per second? Okay, yeah, it is fast. Um, JAXA, that's the Japanese Aerospace... Exploration Agency, hopes to create a small, a few meters in diameter, artificial crater from which Japanese scientists can extract valuable samples capable of revealing the history of the formation of cosmic bodies of this type. So I have, I have a theory. I don't think they're using this space cannon to explore and to study. They, they're testing this to see if they can blow one apart. The one that's barreling towards Earth that we don't know about yet. That's my theory. Well, really? I guess depending on how far away it is, it's probably a bad idea to blow up an asteroid and have it come at us in two pieces instead yeah. of one. Yeah, we, so. learned, we learned that from what which movie? Deep Impact or Armageddon? That Deep, well... Deep impact, the asteroid just kind of hit Earth. Okay. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then, was it Deep Impact? Coming. Yeah, because, what was Freeman. the other movie? It was Morgan Freeman, you, you know, and the waters were seated. Okay. Right, yeah. And I, then I never saw it. I just... Armageddon, oh, and then Armageddon. Well, that's why they called it Deep Impact, because it just hit Earth. Um... <laughs> and and then Armageddon, they actually went up there and like drilled and like blasted and then like showered Earth with like a bunch I of little pieces and remember that. So <laughs> that was the only difference between those two movies is one hit Earth and one didn't. Right. Yeah. But the one that hit Earth, I don't think they really did anything to stop it. Did I they? Know. I thought they went. It's been so long so since I've been since until, I've seen like, it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! And we're dead. They just watched it come. They didn't yeah. Really about it. <laughs> well, you have to think to like get something up there. If you notice it in such a short amount of time and actually do anything that would be effective, mm -hmm. right? Would be but, really hard to do. I mean, you. It's not something that you want to blow up because then, rather than having one big <coughs> big object barreling towards Earth, you have a bunch of little objects that can cause a ton of damage as well. Um, and, like, the little objects are still going to be huge chunks of this thing. Anessa, um, we're talking about a movie. I know, it's Hollywood. <laughs> I'm just saying. But it started because of the space cannon. <laughs> and Dave's idea that it was going to come barreling towards Earth and we don't know it, so they're going to blow up it, blow it up into pieces just, and cause that, even more trouble. That's my conspiracy <laughs> theory. It's mine. So. 
Now, if they were using the space cannon to like somehow push it off of its course towards Earth, then I could see that totally being a thing. That seems to be the best route to go. It's mm-hmm. just to push it, like, like give it a, a nudge. Yeah, That's attach fine. little thrusters, or or have a like a a, a, a snowplow type uh, spacecraft to kind of just push it away. Just yep. push it away. Yeah. Just go this way instead. Thank you. <laughs> no, did you know? I'm that okay th- with that as long as it says thank you. <laughs> It has to be very polite. Yeah, most well, Japanese. <laughs> they're, polite, they're a polite people. You know. They are polite. Yeah. So this is actually they've already done this once in 2010. It looks like um, Japanese scientists actively began exploring asteroids uh, with the Hayabusa mission, which returned to Earth in June 2010 after exploring a 500 meter long rock rich S type asteroid. Hayabusa 2 is a successor of the first spacecraft and is scheduled to be launched in 2014 to conduct research of a C-type asteroid temporarily temporarily called 1999 JU3. It is believed to contain a higher concentration of organic matters and water. Water? Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, this is cool stuff. Hayabusa 2 is expected to reach its target in the middle of 2018 before departing back to Earth in 2019. It's a long ass time. Yeah. It is. Yeah, you got to be in it for the long haul. The long haul if you're into space. You got to be committed to your You job. you can't have fast anything like, when I it quit. comes to space. Like, okay, um <laughs> you get back to Earth in 2 months. Sure. <laughs> Quit! I'm not doing anything. Wake me when we're there. Okay. Well, you're going <laughs> to die in about Out a week the if you don't do anything, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Idea. Okay. Office space in space. Yeah. Not office space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You just yeah. blew my mind. <laughs> If you could double check the airlock airlocks right now, that, that would, would be, be great. great. Okay, what would you replace the stapler with? What what type of device would uh, what's his face want to have that's not a stapler that you would use in space? I believe you have my tang. No, I don't know. <laughs> um. Hmm. I don't know. That's a great idea. I love that. I love office the, space. Office space. In space. Space. But we put the space in office. Space. I don't know. You have my MRE? <laughs> I, I, I believe you have my MRE. You have my, 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 car, my, my uh, carbon monoxide filter or carbon, carbon, <laughs> carbon monoxide? Yeah. I, I, I believe we, you have my soap. That's my soap. I like my soap. Apparently, it was laid off five years, and no one ever told him. <laughs> like, I just I keep shipping home. Up <laughs> no, we'll yeah. let the glitch fix itself when we get it. I like. Done. I like the idea. We should. We should produce it. <laughs> Let's start a Kickstarter right now. Get it. Get it done. Office space, Office space. in yeah. space. Yes. If we All if right. we can get Dave Nelson to back it. I think we can sell it to pretty much anybody. Oh, at that all point. my all my radio money that I have. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Your radio He's fortune. in the money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Enough shenanigans on that. Uh, that. That's the uh, that's the three subjects. That's the three topics. So. Uh, Yay. Yeah. Good stuff. We'll have the links to all these stories in the show notes of the podcast. So if you want to read more, you can certainly do so. And you can certainly listen to our shows on Stitcher Smart Radio. If you have a uh, cell phone, a mobile cellular telephone, uh, for example, an Android phone or or an iPhone or a BlackBerry fo- phone or like a tablet of some kind, and if you put an app on it, you can find a Stitcher Smart Radio app. And Oh, hey, there's Anessa. She's, she's showing her Stitcher laden, her Stitcher laden phone. <laughs> show it show it again. Oh. Here we go. That's What are you listening to there? What is that? Oh, that's actually just my profile. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> and I'm at 55 hours and 11 minutes as of yesterday. Okay. Okay, what's what's neat about Stitcher is uh, you don't have to download anything. You can uh, stream it. You can just... Uh... There you go. Here's shows. Okay. All right. Here. Okay. Um, I've got all songs. I actually have a lot of NPR music shows. I noticed that. Yeah. Um, and then I also have Welcome to Night Vale, and then I have... Um, a bunch of sciencey things, like, um, but they're very short. They're like sixty second science and sixty second tech, health. Um, you got astronomy as well, so okay. <clears throat> cool. They're nice, quick bites to enjoy. Yeah, great thing about uh, Stitcher is it learns what your listening habits are. It learns what you like, kind of like that super intelligent robot. <laughs> Um, it learns your behavior and it gives you suggestions of other shows that you can listen to on Stitcher. Uh, what we want you to do if you're not signed up your, yet for Stitcher, go to stitcher.com slash galactic netcasts and then enter the promo code galactic netcasts. Stitcher.com slash galactic netcasts and enter the promo code galactic netcasts. And uh, we thank you for supporting them who supports us because if we send people to that URL it'll show that Stitcher we're actually helping them out and they'll uh, they'll scratch our back as we scratch theirs. There's a lot of back, back scratching going on. That's a uh -huh. weird, that's an interesting turn. <laughs> everyone's back is itch free. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Apparently everyone's <laughs> back is itchy. All right, there you go. Uh, thanks Stitcher. Let's move on to our picks. These are our entertainment picks that relate to one of the three topics. And looks like Paul's going first. Oh, am I? Yeah. Okay. Dave, I promised you a little bit more in interesting stuff. This is a <laughs> bit more up Dave's alley. So yes. I apologize. Um, I am recommending an article from io9. Now, normally we would just tell you articles, but I can I liked both stories, so I picked the one that I picked the shorter one because this one, this other one is a bit too long. But hey, um, so there's a lot of really weird stuff that's happened in history that has led people to believe that time travel exists. And they're, they what they've done is they've compiled a list of what those things are and what is strange about them. So, okay. I mean, you, so you have, like, at the top of it, you have in, in 1901, there are supposedly two female academics who allegedly experienced a time slip during, like, uh, the, and there was also time during the French Revolution where they they reportedly had a quote-unquote time slip. Uh, but the first quote-unquote real one was in 1928 and was really only spotted in 2010. Okay. So th this is, no, okay, so l l let me back up. There's an old film, Charlie Chaplin film, called The Circus in 1928. In that film, somebody spotted the fact that, that there's a, a gentleman on the film who looks an awful lot like he's talking on a phone. <laughs> a cell phone. Right, and that which did not, obviously did not exist. So if you watch it, it's a little creepy. It's like you're like, okay, he looks like he's talking oh, yeah. to somebody. He's like in the black and jacket and he's up got against something his up against his head. Ear. Would, and nobody does that. Like, there was no reason for people to do that, so it's kind of like makes you scratch your head. You're like, huh. It, a lot of this is just plain weird. Can I, can I play devil's advocate for a second? Please. If he's on a cell phone in 1928... How is he getting service? Yeah, he's providing the service. How's he, how's he, who's he talking to? I have no idea. Maybe it's a special time travel phone. Maybe no it's idea. the doctor. Uh, a same, a similar thing happened in 1938 in Massachusetts. Again, a woman is, and this one's even clearer. It, I looks a lot like she's talking on a phone. Why would she talk on a phone? Like, <laughs> what is she doing? Who knows? Maybe it's, <coughs> excuse maybe me. it's the same person, and they're traveling through time. I don't know. They change yes. genders. Oh, oh, oh okay, All right. <laughs> okay. So 1938, uh, 1936, gotcha. Yeah, and, and I mean this, and then I mean I could go on. One of the things that this gets kind of weird. 
1935, while still a, a wing commander, he was sent to inspect a disused airfield near Edinburgh called a place in a place called Durham or Drem. Mm -hmm. uh, he found it in a very dilapidated state with cattle grazing on the grass and had forced like in, that had for, w w grass that had forced its way through the cracks on the tarmac. Uh, later that day, he ran into he ran into trouble flying his biplane in heavy rain, blah blah blah, blah and decided to fly back to Drem to get his bearings. As he approached the airfield, the torrential rain abruptly changed to bright sunlight. This is according to him. When he looked down, he saw the airfield had been completely renovated and was now in use. There was a mechanic. There were mechanics in blue overalls walking, and four yellow planes parked on the runway. <clears throat> one of these, one of these was a model which, for all of his all of his aviation experience, he was completely failed to recognize. So, the the creepy part about that is. The yellow plane that he's describing wasn't in use by that airfield until four years later. Whoa. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. But there's stories like that. Like there's a few. There's another one. There's another one in 1941. People call him the apparently the time traveling hipster. Because you look at this guy, it's a real clear shot of him too. It's he's probably not a time traveler. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like a hipster. Yeah. <laughs> He's got, but he he's got, just he's, looks completely different than everybody else. Like just so out of place. On. He's got like a looks like a hoodie with a t-shirt. Uh huh. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, that guy, that guy, man. Yeah, and then and there's a few others, but uh, wow. uh, yeah, that's. I really dug on this story. I was hoping you guys hadn't seen it. Oh my god, he's got. Yeah, a, I hadn't seen it. He's got a printed t-shirt. You would not have a printed t-shirt in 1941. I'm no. sorry. I love his hair. The hair really makes it. It's just like the hair and the sunglasses. It's just like... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And, of course, the Philadelphia exper Experiment 1943. Sure. Henry Fonda and Shirley Temple checking their stagecoat route, uh, route, route on an iPhone. <laughs> huh. God, I'm going to read this article later when we're yeah, done. Yeah, it's like we've... the Folks, the stuff that I've listed is about... just about half. There's a few wow. more. Um, hmm. All with varying degrees of, like, you know, like the... Oh, they whole, mentioned John Titor. The uh, the Henry Fonda, Shirley Temple one is like, no, of course he's not looking at a phone. It just looks like he's looking at a phone. But some <laughs> of these are, like, just kind of plain weird. Yeah. I I love the hipster. That's... that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hipster before hipsters were cool. Yeah. <laughs> He was a hipster before hipsters were even around. <laughs> before they existed. Yeah. All right. It's like cool. the ultimate hipster. Good stuff, Paul. Cool. I'm going to have to read that article later. <laughs> all right. Is that it? Is that all you want to say? Yeah, yeah that's, that's my pick. Okay. Cool. All right. So mine is a TV show, or it's an episode of a TV show, Cosmic Journeys. Solar Storms and Plasma Rockets. I watched this, I believe, on Netflix, but you can also get it on Amazon. We'll have the link in the show notes and on the uh, PIX page at galacticnetcasts.com. So uh, modern science has linked polar light shows called auroras, of course we all know what those are, to vast waves of electrified gas hurled into our direction by the sun, and today's researchers from a whole new generation see this dynamic substance, plasma, as an energy source that may one day fuel humanity's expansion into space. And uh, basically, this show is all about the use of plasma, or possible uses of plasma. And I learned a little something. I didn't really know much about plasma until I watched this episode. You know, is you think of it, when you see it, you think more like it looks like gas, but it's not gas, it's plasma. It's something completely different. Um, do you know much about plasma there, uh, Anessa? Um, not really, besides the kind you donate, I suppose. Or the kind, <laughs> the kind that's in TVs, plasma TVs. Oh, yeah, plasma TVs. <laughs> no, I don't really know too much about plasma, honestly. All right. Apparently, it can be used... Um, it's a very efficient fuel if we were able to 
if we were actually able to, you know, control it and, and use it st st in a stable way to, you know, as a, um, a source of fuel, as a source of going faster. What's that called, the word I'm looking for? The uh, accelerant, an accelerant. And we would actually get to places a lot sooner. We would be able to explore the, the solar system uh, pretty readily if we could actually harness the use of plasma in our, in our engines. And it's, uh, there's researchers out there that are actually very close to making this happen. I mean, there's... That's cool. What they're, what they're trying to figure out is how it reacts in space, how it, um, you know, how it interacts with, with the vacuum of space. And there was a really cool experiment that they showed on this on this episode of this this show. Um, they actually launched a balloon, and it, in it there was like a um, experiment of some kind with plasma, and it actually reached the atmosphere, or you know reached high enough that you're in the vacuum of space. And it came back down, and they tested out, or they saw how it reacted, and all that kind of thing. So it was very yeah. science like uh, experiment based show but they actually showed a lot of uh, hypothetical stuff too you know how plasma could be used in rockets and it's really neat um, so if you're interested in one of the possibilities of of um, getting us into the stars I would definitely check this out cosmic journeys is the name of the show and the episode is solar storms and plasma rockets hmm. solar storms and you <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it also talks about um, the makeup of the of the universe and basically, um, you know, what, all the different places that plasma may be or is in in the universe in the galactic makeup. Kind of neat. Huh. There you go. That's my pick. Cool. 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 Yeah, Vanessa, it's your turn. Sweet. <laughs> My pick is a movie called Doomsday Book. Yay! Doesn't it sound happy? I don't like the sound of I that. Like that. Um, it's actually a Korean film, so it's completely subtitled, and it's more like a little anthology. So there's three chapters. So there's three completely different, unrelated stories. Um, unfortunately, I only I was able to watch two out of the three, so I can't really talk about the third one. But it sounds like oh. the third one would apply to um, our show as well. Mainly, it's going to be like the second one that I talk about. But in case you're wondering, the first chapter, I believe, is called uh, A Brave New World, if I remember. And it basically is a zombie apocalypse type film. And it follows the person who, um, I guess, like the patient zero type person. <laughs> uh -huh. And for some reason, just yesterday, like I watched a couple of movies and Beef was not represented in a positive note at all because it was Beef that started, well, it was an apple and somehow like a cow ate the apple that was contaminated and then the people ate cows that was contaminated and it became zombies. It was a zombie apocalypse. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, 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 hang on one second. <laughs> I think uh -huh. I've seen this. I think I've seen part of this before. Possibly. Yeah, it's yeah, on Netflix. yeah. Yeah. I, I keep think... seeing it on Netflix, and so, I was like, okay, fine. I'm just gonna watch this. Do you know what um what what kind of, was you said Korean film? Yes. Um, is it portraying the American beef industry? No. Out of curiosity. Um, okay. No, it. The well, the first chapter basically follows this guy who's a scientist and he's in the military, and his family is kind of mean to him, and they leave him behind, knowing that he gets out of the military a week or two later, and they're like, "Okay, we're gonna go on vacation, bye!" And like the whole family just leaves him behind with a big list of chores to do, and so he's sorting through all these recyclables, and then he goes um, and dumps food off at the whatever dumpster where they process the food and turn it into chum, or not chum, but anyway, food for the the cows and whatnot. I'm thinking sharks. I don't know what they call it for cows. I think it's um, just feed. Feed. Mm -hmm. So they create, like, this feed for the cows and whatnot, and um, the cows eat it, and 
you know, the cows eventually get slaughtered and put on the plate. And the guy ends up eating this beef when he goes out on a on his first date with some girl at some Korean barbecue place. And so you have, like, the grill in front of them, and you've got the slabs of beef, like, cooking. And um, <clears throat> when the outbreak starts, they show different people and how much beef they've consumed, but it doesn't really attack, like, a, the American beef industry in any way. So I guess that was kind of I was nice. just curious because I've heard of that before. <clears throat> is okay. a lot of foreign films take shots at our particular, like, the American way of food. No, now food. the other film that I watched last <clears throat> night, Branded, did kind of poke at the American food industry and whatnot. So, but this one, not so much, just because it was done in a different light. It wasn't like your typical burger joint. It was sure. their customary, mm -hmm. like, let's go and have uh, bulgogi, their Korean barbecue. So, mm, ah. good. Mm. Um, and so that was the first chapter, not really related to the show, uh, right. but the yeah, second we... chapter, like like these were actually not bad. Um, <coughs> the second chapter is called the Heavenly Creature, and it's about this robot who reaches enlightenment on its own while working at a temple. So these Buddhists purchase a couple of robots. One of them. Um, or these Buddhist monks buy a couple of robots and they've had them for a while. And one of them they use to greet people when they come into the temple. So it's got like this little screen for its face and it'll like, oh, let me tell you all about the temple and how awesome it is and yay Buddha. Yay <laughs> <Get> Buddha! <laughs> yay Buddha! Buddha. <laughs> and then the other robot though is the one that they feel has reached enlightenment. And... Apparently, whenever someone reaches enlightenment, they are Buddha. They are a Buddha, I guess. Oh. Okay. And so to get confirmation that it wasn't like a, a glitch in the programming of the robot, they basically uh -huh. call the robot's manufacturer to have one of their technicians come out and look at it and confirm that there's nothing wrong with this robot. And the guy comes out and he plugs into the robot's head and scans <clears throat> and everything seems to be functioning properly. And so then they ask the technician, like, so what are you going to do? And he's like, well, I have to report this back to the company and then they're probably going to want to exterminate it. And then there's this debate on whether or not the robot is actually aware of itself and is capable of reaching enlightenment because... I guess with Buddhism, you have past lives, right. and a robot only lives one life. And so how can you experience, go through all these experiences in all of your lives to reach this point of enlightenment? And so there's like a really big philosophical debate about that. Um, so it was, I don't know, it was really interesting. <laughs> And I don't want to give like a whole lot away, but that was like the big debate between it was whether or not this robot was legitimately self-aware and whether or not it was actually able to reach the point of enlightenment in Buddhism. And I think that's going to be the question when this does eventually happen at some point. How are we going to figure out if a robot or an android or artificial intelligence is self-aware, you know? What, what point? At what point did, did they become sentient? You know. Yeah, at, at one point, and how can we determine that point that they actually become sentient and they have their own intelligence and whatnot? Um, and so that was like the big point of this segment. Um, but yeah, it was it was really interesting. It gave you something to think about. Um, and then the third segment, which unfortunately I haven't had a chance to watch. I started watching it, but it was kind of late, and I was really tired. I'm like, if I keep watching it, I'm just going to get sucked in, and I'm not going to go to bed till like 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I was like, no, I'm turning it off. Um, but the third chapter, the last chapter, um, on IMDb, it says it's called Happy Birthday. And um, it says a little girl logs into a strange website and puts in an order for a new pool ball for her billiards-obsessed father. 
Um, and I do remember at the beginning of this story that the little girl sitting at the computer in her uncle's room and she's clicking through the computer and whatnot and the mother is asking if she's seen like her father's eight ball and she reaches for the eight ball which is by the computer and she throws it out the window which I don't know why <laughs> she, she just like chunks it out the window like nope I haven't seen anything <laughs> and <laughs> So I'm pretty sure this is why she was putting in a new order for the eight ball. Um, but shortly after, an unidentified meteor heads towards Earth and all human beings flee to underground bomb shelters. So that part I didn't get to see, but I didn't really understand why she was chunking this eight ball out the window. But yeah, I'll have to actually watch that and maybe it can be like, hey, I recommend the last part. Yeah, so, I've, seen this. I've seen this as well. Uh, I don't, I don't remember why I started watching it. Maybe I was like you and I saw it so much on Netflix. Yeah, I kept seeing it pop up on Q and recommended Vanessa Doomsday Book. Okay, fine, I will finally watch your recommendation. <laughs> Whatever Netflix. <laughs> fine, you can't tell me what to do. Play. <laughs> I'm. I have self. I have. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, like, I recommend, if you don't mind the subtitle thing, giving it a watch. So, especially, like, I really enjoyed the middle one because it makes you think, like, at what point does a robot become right. sentient? So. Yeah. We may have to uh, cross that bridge someday, you know? Yeah. Maybe so. we'll look We'll look back at... Um, Doomsday <laughs> as, a, as a source source material. Well, because you know, a lot of sci-fi predicts future technologies and whatnot. Yeah, I know. So look, look, it's look very the, possible. With the Star Trek communicator, you know, and uh, yeah. Kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, if you like our picks, if you'd like to uh, experience our picks as well, you can go to the picks page at galacticnetcast.com. That's another way that you can help support the network. Help fund us, and Ooh. as and and help us um, continue doing what we're doing. I mean, we'll do it no matter what. But you know, a little something for the effort is nice too. So. <laughs> All right, so uh, there you go. Uh, we got one more piece of this. Actually, two more pieces of business. We have to ask the question of the week. And um, Paul, what is it? You you prepped the show this week, so you have to ask the question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely. This question might sound a little weird, but hear me out. Uh, if you were given the power to time travel, but each time you had to jump through time, you ended up ten feet above or on the ten feet ten feet above the ground where your destination was, only eventually to fall. Would you do it, and why? Fifty <laughs> is not that far up. Yeah, right. Okay. So it wouldn't kill you, but it would probably no, hurt. No, but it's enough to. Either hurt or injure you. Right. So and you consider, like you, maybe you'll fall on pillows. Maybe you'll. Or you fall could fall on, on boulders. <laughs> right. Whatever. Or lava rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a gamble, isn't it? <laughs> so you really don't know unless you knew about the history of that location at the time that you were going to it. Yeah, yeah what, so we know where we're go or how far ahead in time are we going that we're going. Yeah, you pick the destination. Okay. Well, that's the thing though, cuz you'd have to at least have a general idea like okay, so I'm going back to this area 100 years. There were still people living here, so things like the terrain probably wasn't that bad. But then if you go back a few hundred thousand years or something like who knows? Um, or the other way too. Go or the, the other way. way. So you never really know. Like you could end up dropping ten feet into the middle of a rail line that was built like twenty years down the road, and it's like, bam, train, you're done. Yeah, like, what are the chances? What are the chances <laughs> of that happening? Oh my god. That That'd would be, be my luck. Um, you get drop. You, no, no, this is that, happened. That's pretty funny. In the future, <laughs> like, ah! in the, in the future is all trains. It's like trains. <laughs> all trains, no. all trains everywhere. <laughs> At least people finally decided to embrace public transportation yeah. and yeah. use trains. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Sucks for the guy that's time traveling to that time period, though. Right. 
Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> I'm gonna um, say yes. I'm gonna say yes. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bite the bullet and take my chances. You would you would do it. You'd roll yes. those dice. Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. I would enough. probably be really unlucky rolling that <laughs> dice. I would be the person that fell ten feet and then got like whacked off by a train. Like <laughs> bam, <laughs> and I'm done. Um. Yeah, I probably wouldn't, just falling 10 feet, because you never know what the train is, depending on how you land, you could break something, sprain something. Well, here's what you do, Anessa, you put, like, some kind of, um... I, I mean, know. I could put padding on, but just yeah, depends padding, on how you land, though. Or, like, a little mini parachute that pops out, you know, like one of 10 those... 10 feet's not far enough... Yeah, it's true. For the parachute to work. I might as well just be Mary Poppins with my umbrella. It gets all nice and puffy by the time you hit the ground. <laughs> it's like you hit the ground and it goes... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I love it. You no, here's what you do that. It's a requirement now in the question. You, you <laughs> have to have this thing pop up and just go splat in a cartoon-like fashion. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you do yeah. is you bring with you you bring with you a some kind of big bean bag or something, you know, something <laughs> cushy. You bring that with you. You drop it as you're emerging in the new time, and you drop it below you, and you just fall on it. Now, what's what would happen if it was something like the story that we talked about last time, where like the stupid rules about time travel. And then it was like you have to travel like time travel naked. Like how could you bring oh, a bean bag yeah, with that you? Would be, that'd be dumb. <laughs> so these are all excellent questions. They they are. We've um, taken this to the level exactly that I wanted. Thank <laughs> you. This is why this is why we asked the question. This is this it is. is yeah. Um, I would have to say I probably wouldn't. <laughs> oh, you party pooper. <laughs> I don't want to be stuck, like, going back. Um, I actually uh, talked to Brad about this, and he said, yeah, he's like, you have to think if you end up, like, back in time. Um, I think it was Brad. I don't know. I was talking to somebody about this earlier. But, yeah, like, you go back in time, and say you go back to see Shakespeare, but you end up, like, in the middle of the street, and then you break your leg or cut it on something, and then you get infected, and there's not like any sort of medical technology, and then you're just like screwed. You guys have so the worst luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys, you guys must like have very low opinions of what's going to happen to you in the future. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about going back in time. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> like if you go back in time and you don't have the med the advances in medicine, I mean, you will have some idea of what to do and what not to do, but they weren't exactly as advanced as they are now. If you went back yeah. into Shakespearean times, so you also have to take that into account if you do end up injured. If you go back in time, now going forward in time, I would like to think that our future has advanced. In medicine, or you go too far ahead, just like and the then there's no more society. It's like Mad Max or something. Yeah, or there's or the, it's like Time Machine with those the creatures that live. Oh, under Morlocks! Why did yeah, that the Morlocks. Happen? Morlocks and <laughs> I always forget. I just oh. remember the Morlocks. Yeah. At least their names, anyway. I want to say Lilu, but that's not right. <laughs> so Paul, yeah, Paul, what's your answer? What are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? Yes. I, dude, I gotta roll them dice. Good for you. Yeah, I do, right? I mean, <laughs> you only live once, you know. You know. Well, you know. <laughs> no. Jeez. I, the temptation would just be too great. And yeah, I would try to game the system. I try to bring like I think you got the right track, Dave. Just like, like bring a bring like an inner tube with you or something. An <laughs> inner tube. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, though, because what if they're suddenly, like, they Ooh. made a pool or a pond yes. or something, and you land in, in the middle of this pond? See, uh, an inner tube would be it would fit in multiple situations. So, you strap it on. Like, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Although, Push what them. happens if the inner tube, like, like flips? <laughs> you yeah. land on your back. <laughs> Two inner tubes, you can be a sandwich. 
There you go. Yep, I think we saw Done. It. Yep. Take that in your <laughs> take that in your question, Paul. <laughs> I'm glad we it's had an this intertube talk. sandwich. All right. So interesting. Oh, my voice is cracking tonight for some reason. I'm going Puberty. through. Puberty. No. All right. So we would love to know your answer. What would you do in this situation? Uh, let us know. Call our voicemail number. It's 805 328 3966 or galacticnetcasts at gmail.com. Before we get out of here, we got a little feedback. Um, oh. We have some emails. That we had that we got last week, we actually included these on uh, Alien Invasion last week, but we'll, we'll repeat them here because we're not really sure if they listened to one show or the other. It's just g okay. general okay. general feedback. So first one. Well, is, one of them actually specifies that they listened to both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay. So uh, hey guys, Jeff from California, love the show a lot. I mean a lot. Like, a lot, but... Oh, thanks, please, Jeff. Please, please, way less Doctor Who talk. Dave, I, Dave I, can, I, I can promise you that I did not send an email under a sir name. I was gonna say, <laughs> did you do this, Paul? Did you no. make a, uh, a, a new alias? No, though I appreciate, I appreciate his perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I know where he's coming from. Uh, yeah. Okay, he says, you know, I'm not a Doctor Who fan, and sometimes the show becomes almost a Doctor podcast. Just one guy's opinion. Okay, I don't understand. know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> oh wait. I oh, and, okay. If I may speak to, in my defense for just a moment here, I try, sir. I try to get him back on track, but it's hard. It's difficult. You yes. understand, please. You do a good job, Paul. You you ground us. Jeff, I, I'm sorry. I feel that's a failing on my part, and I will promise to do better. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe Jeff listens to more Alien Invasion than he does uh, Time Traveling Robots in Space. Although we do talk quite a bit about it here, too, because Time Travel. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And there's been a lot of news with Doctor Who, and I assume... Sorry, Jeff, we're going to mention something about the 50th episode, or anniversary episode. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to happen eventually. It's going to happen after November. What's what's the day? 23rd. 23rd. Okay. It's so, the way. But. All right. Next email. Entertainment. Next email. Stephen. I forgot Gary. the last line. Oh. Oh. Keep up the great entertainment you provide. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you sir. All right. Stephen Gary Bailey uh, <laughs> says, Hi, I'm Steve from the UK. Listen to hi, Alien. Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. I listen to Alien Invasion and Time Traveling Robots in Space on Stitcher. Thank you. Great shows. I listen every week. By the way, my Stitcher usage is now up to 1,312 hours. Wow. Wow. Yeah. He's probably at like 1,500 by now. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, Stephen, um, he commented on our Facebook page. That's where we got his feedback. Oh, cool. So you can you can leave us a comment on our Facebook page. You can email us. You can there's a lot of different ways you can get a hold of us, including know, we're we're very accessible people. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no lack of 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 communication means of communication as far as our shows go. All right, so we have one more piece of feedback which came in today, and it was a voicemail. And uh -oh. here it is. Hello, this is speaker again. You recently posed a question of what body part would be replaced if one could choose a body part to be replaced. I think uh, an obvious choice would be to replace fat, fat being the body's mechanism for storing excess energy, so to speak. There's got to be a, a more efficient system in the, in the science fiction universe. One, uh, one could hypothetically store all the energy that one could, could intake in a much smaller volume, of course. Uh, imagine unlimited energy. Yeah, just think about it. So instead of... Okay, okay. all right, hear me out. Instead of anti-matter, we have anti-fat. Yes. It's, it's super condensed energy. And that would take care of obesity. 
You know? Yeah, I've got would. plenty of it to get rid of. But, but do you do not want kidney stones? <laughs> <laughs> I got some that I could I could uh, shed off myself as well. I said shed, 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 not what? Never mind. <laughs> what, what are you saying, Dave? Poopery. <laughs> what are you saying? We get out the poopery immediately. <laughs> yeah. I think we got a show, a, a, a oh. show title. I think poopery is going to be the show title. Awesome. But no, that's a really interesting idea. I I really dig his answer. Yeah. See, he's he's thinking outside the box, that speaker. We're thinking like actual like appendages. Know, like a, you know, an organ. Yeah. We, <laughs> right, organs, appendages. Yeah, we didn't specify though. I had some yeah. No, that's true. Body part. And I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Your skin is technically an organ. It is. Yeah. All right. On that note, that's going to do it for this uh, Galactic Netcast. It's the Time Traveling Robots in Space, number 68. And before we get out of here, let's do final thoughts. Anessa, you're always first. Go. I don't have anything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm ashamed. Not ashamed. I'm, yeah, I'm disappointed? ashamed. Disappointed. That's that's the word I was looking for. Disappointed. Like I don't really see you being ashamed, but maybe disappointed. Although I really dig my shirt. <laughs> it was a random boot shirt, and I will. <laughs> <laughs> You've got like this pug staring at the. I forget he... the name of the plant. In. Uh, oh. Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario World. It's just a, like the. It's like the. I don't know what you call it. It's plant. big plant that comes out of the tube that like bites at you, like as Mario runs by. Yeah. And it's like a stare off between this pug and this plant because the pug really wants to pee on the, uh, <laughs> the hydrant, pug? and the plant's like, "Try it, I dare you." The pug looks desperate. <laughs> the pug wants. Yeah, the pug to know. is just kind of like, "Why are you here?" <laughs> The pug is this close to doing the pee pee dance. I know. So, there's my final thought. I really dig my shirt. All right, awesome. I, you know what? That's a good final thought. <laughs> Thank All right. you. Uh, let's wrap her up with uh, Paul's final thought. Be excellent to each other. Yeah. You know what? Last week, uh -huh. I did. I did your final thought. Well, two weeks How'd ago, I did your final thought. Went well. I thought. All right. I was nervous before I said it. You should have been. It's hard yeah. to deliver, actually. You wouldn't think so. And then Brad and uh, uh, Brad, Matt. Matt made fun of me for uh, having final thought that it's the same one every time. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> kidding. All right, that's going to do it for us. We'll talk to you guys next time. Yay! Goodbye. Bye.